Hi folks, we're at LR Workshop. In this video, I'm going to do an illegal oil change. Why is it illegal? Well, firstly, it's been 12 months on this 300 TDI since I've changed the oil. It's supposed to be every six months. Second reason is I'm not going to change the oil filter. Uh, I'm not going to change the oil filter because I need to change the oil this weekend and I don't have one. And I thought I had one, but I don't have one. Actually, the filter change really only needs to be about 6,000 miles. The oil degrades with time, but I don't suspect the filter degrades with time. I've only done 3,000 miles in the last year on this oil filter, so I'm gonna keep it in, actually. And uh, it's gonna make changing the oil a lot more pleasurable because it's uh, a lot easier just to change the oil. The filter is very messy. My oil change um, experience is a hassle enough as it is, because I have no flat land where I can check oil levels on my vehicle. Or rather, the only flat land I have where I can check the oil levels on my vehicle is in my garage. And to get the vehicle in the garage, I've got to empty all the stuff in the garage just to be able to check the oil levels. And if it's raining, fair enough, you're in the garage, you're dry, but anything that's in the garage I have to get out and put outside will get wet. So actually, I can only check the oil when it's dry. Um, and I can be asked to get everything out of the garage. So that's just a bit of a challenge. I could go and drive somewhere to check the oil levels, somewhere that is flat, but then you've started the engine, you're gonna to have to wait however long to be able to get an accurate reading. So that's a bit of a pain. So anything that makes the oil changes easier, actually, I'm gonna go for that. I've done this job loads of times, but I always forget the size of the socket. It's either 17 or 19 mil, so I'll take a couple down there and figure it out. Luckily, because I've done this job so much, I never tighten it up too much, but I know if you can buy some new vehicles, it can be friggin' tight sometimes. This is the moment when I realise I've got the glove on the wrong hand. Through bitter experience, I tend to use like a rubber glove or a nylon glove on the hand I used to take the plug out with because more often than not, it'll end up going up your sleeve or covering your hand completely. And if you've got some of those uh, gorilla type mechanic gloves, they're not oil proof and you'll just ruin them. Don't you just love those times when you just drop the sump plug in the oil pan and you have to go fishing around to get it out? Well, it didn't happen this time, but I'm sure you've all done it. One thing I'm going to do is also illegal, reuse the copper washer. This one gets a bit deformed in one direction, but I just turn it around and then hopefully it'll deform in the other way. But I do find that this um, sump plug gently weeps, just like my guitar. Uh, so what I do is... Uh, Put some PTFE on it. I do know you're not supposed to use PTFE on um, brake lines and things because it does melt, but uh, engine oil seems to work okay. And it goes that way. That's it. It's always difficult to remember which way around it goes. Give it a blow for good luck. I've spent a lot of time chasing oil leaks on this vehicle and the sump is completely dry at this point. However, you do then get the problem of getting a rusty sump and this one's starting to go a bit on the bottom. So, swings and roundabouts really. I tend to wipe the drips off just so I know in the future if it's leaking and the PTFE didn't actually work. Torque wrench setting, something like 36 newton meters or something like that. 
I don't intend to worry. It's about that. I've probably done close to 15 oil changes on this vehicle since I've owned it. Yeah, this one being the 16th, I'm probably just not in the mood to do it by the book. I'm not too worried because this engine has been very regularly serviced. The, probably the, f the first six years I owned it, I did oil changes every six months by the book. That's slowly extended to nine months and now I'm on about a yearly schedule, which isn't great. But this engine's got 180 something miles on it, thousand miles on it. <sighs> you know, if the damage has been done, it's been done up to this point, it's settled in. So I'm not too worried about one particular oil change not being um, just the way it was. However, I tend to think that I'm not too worried about not the perfect specification of oil because this engine's really old. Um, I don't want to spend that much money on the vehicle. Um, I'm not going to bring it back from the dead. So I'm just happy with bog standard kind of generic-ish oil that's not mineral. I wouldn't use mineral, but semi-synthetic is good enough for me and just change it on a semi-regular basis. One thing I did experience when I first got this vehicle, it didn't have such a great service history just after I'd bought it. What I've seen with this engine, it was very black inside when I got it. Kind of like six, seven years later, 30,000 miles later, the inside is very clean. And that's from doing six monthly oil changes. So actually, you can, I've really seen the benefit of doing the regular maintenance on the vehicle. So on the one hand, I'm saying regular maintenance is really good for the engine. And on the other hand, they're saying, it's really friggin' difficult and I cannot be asked this time. So what is the point of this video? Um, actually, there is no point, I guess. Um, I, w I have aspirations. I would love to have a lift. I would love to have flat, indoors, warm space with no wind that I could work on my vehicle on. <laughs> But that's not the thing, you know, you've got to be a bit crazy to, to go through the things that I have to go through to, to do basic stuff. But it's a hobby, you know, that's why, um, that's why I do this stuff. So I sometimes, sometimes you do things and uh, it becomes, there was a period of time, probably about two years, I didn't really work on the vehicle much at all because I just, because of the, the, the maintenance burden and things you'd been fitting to, new things you'd been fitting were starting to crumble. There were starting to be indiscriminate failures on the vehicle. And I was thinking, ah, why do I even bother? Why do I even bother? So for about two years, I didn't really do much on the vehicle. Um, but that's been res resurged a bit now. Um, I'm not too worried about not the perfect specification of oil. Um, the, I guess, for me, it feels it's more important to put fresh oil in, no matter what the quality, than running it a bit longer with lesser quality oil. You might pay more and you may have additives that could last for 12 months, but if you change every six months, then you, you know, you're going to be topping up with additives, as it were, anyway. Um, engine oil is a massive debate, as I'm sure you're all aware on the internet, and Unfortunately, there's not enough. Whoa, 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 that is a can of worms. I'm not going there. Let's carry on with the video. So I'm posting this video to say, this is what I'm doing. It's okay sometimes not to just do what you read on the internet. Everything's an opinion on the internet, more or less. <sighs> do what you want. And don't necessarily, you don't have to do what I do. I'm just saying what I do. It's up to you to choose whether you agree or don't agree with me. If you do or don't, leave a comment. That's what the internet is about. We can have a discussion about stuff. If you're a fleet manager, fair enough. You could lose your job if you do something wrong, you put the wrong oil in or whatever. But when it's your vehicle and it's your hobby, like the internet's there for reference, but you just do what you want. So there. Um, subscribe, like, comment that kind of stuff if you feel the need anyway i need to get on with this oil change so bye for now